We'll begin our look at the drawing tools and impress with the line tool. When you use the drawing tools, it's often useful to turn on the grid to help with placement. To do that, go to the view menu, choose grid, display the grid. And you get a non-printing grid of dots to just help you see where you are, helps you line items up on the slide. Now click line tool icon in the drawing toolbar to activate the line tool. Click where you want the line to begin, drag to the end point and release. There's your line. With the selection handles visible, these green squares, use the line and filling toolbar to modify the line formatting. Let's begin with the arrow style. You can put an arrow on one end or the other of the line and they can be any of these styles. We'll put a square arrow on that end and a triangular arrow on that end and you see if I click off the line that you have nice ends. Okay, now I'm click back on the line and let's look at the line style options. Plenty of options. I'm just going to go ahead and choose a continuous line. Now we're going to choose line width and I'm just going to click the up arrow. You see you get a thicker and thicker line. Of course we can choose a color. I'm a big fan of purple, what can I say? The fill tools are not available. This is a shadow tool, small shadow, not too effective. I'll take it off. So that's the line tool, very simple. That begins to show you how all the drawing tools work. To use the rectangle and oval tools, just click either the rectangle or the oval or ellipse tool to activate, drag to draw the shape, or hold down the shift key while you drag to draw a circle with the oval tool or a square with the rectangle tool. Then of course you can use the line and filling toolbar to change the fill and the line width and so forth, just like the others. Use the text tool and the font work gallery. The text tool is useful to create a new text box anywhere on the slide. Just click on the text tool, click and drag to create the text box and type the new text, which can then of course be formatted with the appropriate toolbar. Font work you probably know as word art and you know how it is with word art. It can look funky, and yet, sometimes you see people use it so cleverly customized that it's absolutely wonderful. So just click one, bring it into your document, and I would say modify it, but there it is for what it's worth. Connectors are jolly useful little devices that joins objects and also remains attached when the joined objects are moved or copied. So I've got a couple of objects here on the screen. I'll click the connector and here's the possibilities. Let's just choose one with a line on one end. I'll point to this and click on one of the handles and then release on another handle. And then if you move this object, the connector moves with it. Let me show you a curved connector. Again, hover and drag. Or well, let's go to this one and see how. See, that would be really hard to do freehand. And the beauty of connectors is they move with the object. So it makes it really nice to make a diagram and then use connectors so that if you end up moving things around, the connectors don't get lost. I just want to show you briefly now the curves, polygons, and freeform lines group of tools. We'll begin with the freeform line. This is just a tool to click and drag to draw whatever complex shape you might want. Artistry is not really my strong suit, but there it is. And of course you can naturally customize it just as you would any line. The other tools are a bit more exciting. 
there's a filled curve and a plane curve, a filled and a non-filled polygon, and a 45 degree filled and non-filled polygon. They work in similar ways. Let's do, do the filled curve. You click where you want to begin, drag to the next point, and then continue to click until you're done. And you can see you can create quite complex shapes. And then double click to finish. I'll take that out and I'll show you an empty curve. Again, click to begin, drag to the next point, and click and double click to finish. You can edit these tools with the points tool. This is the points tool. I'm going to click on this freeform line, click on the points tool, and you get these special um, selection handles that allow you to customize the line at that point. As I say, artistry isn't my thing. But let's put points on this, and then we can make this a somewhat different shape. Okay. If I draw a filled polygon, click, drag, click, click, double click to finish, choose the points tool, and change the shape with the points. Okay, and of course customize, customizable as to line and fill, just like any other shape. In addition to the basic shapes on the rectangle and the ellipse tool, you also have the additional shapes here, the symbol shapes, block arrows, flowchart tools, and callouts. So these are fun shapes to use. Let's, for example, use the thought bubble. And there we have. And let's come here and get the heart shape. And let's choose a basic shape, a cube. Okay, so those are additional shapes. You can edit the way they appear using the yellow handle. So on this, I can lengthen the thought bubble. On this, I can change the, the way, I don't want to go that far. I can change the height, the depth to height. This one doesn't have a yellow handle, so we won't be able to edit, edit, edit that one. Sometimes when I want a cloud, I put this all the way up here and just turn off the line and then, Looks just like a cloud icon. Works, doesn't it? Anyway, those are the additional tools, and don't forget the stars, because they do something fun. If you use this yellow handle, look how amazing the change can be. Lots of fun with these tools. You can create a lot of effects with these tools. I wanted to show you how to convert any shape to a 3D object but you know, this person in their YouTube video has done everything that needs to be done, so I'm just going to play it for you. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to draw 3D objects in OpenOffice Draw. Okay, so to start with, we first of all need to create a 2D object. In this case, I'm going to create a rectangle. So I'm really moving my cursor down to the bottom toolbar, select the rectangle tool. Just click and drag a rectangle onto the page. Now, to convert this to 3D, all you have to do is to right click on the shape, go to the convert menu, and select to 3D. Now, see that the shape has been made 3D on the page. If you want to edit the 3D settings, all you have to do is right click again and choose 3D effects. So, you can choose whether the edges of the shape are rounded, you can also choose the depth of your 3D object. In this case, I'm just going to increase the depth to 10 centimeters. Once you're happy with those settings, you can click on the side button at the top of the screen, close the 3D effects window, and you can now see that the shape is much deeper. To complete your 3D shape, you may want to rotate it on the page. To do this, you first of all need to make sure it's selected, which is highlighted by the series of green squares around the outside of the shape, and then click on it again until the green square 
eyes turn into red circles, and then you can drag the shape into any position you want. And select on that element. You then click out of the shape to return to the main open office drawer window. Any shape you draw in Open Office can be rotated. Just click on the shape and choose the Rotate tool. The handles change to red handles. If you point at any corner handle of the object and hold it, it changes to the little curved rotation arrow. Click and hold down to rotate the object. Now let's click on this one and with the Rotate tool active we get the red handles click to a corner handle and rotate. Some objects rotate on their center, some objects rotate on an edge. It just You'll just have to experiment. After all, you can always move it back. And let's rotate this one. There. If you want to skew or change the shape of an object, you can point to the red handle in the center of any edge and the pointer changes to this skew pointer and then you can change the shape. Okay, well, it didn't seem to change it very much, did it? Okay, so let's try skewing this one. There. Again, if I was an artist, I might be able to make the skew tool do something amazing, but I'm sort of a technician, so I can show you how it works and look for you to do the artistic interpretation. The alignment tools are used to align objects to each other or to the slide. To do that, you click on an object to select it and choose the alignment option from this menu. We can align to the left, to the right or to the center, to the top, to the bottom or to the vertical center. So let's send this to the right and then send it to the vertical center. And now you see this object is at the right edge of the slide and in the vertical center of the slide. Now if we click on the plus sign and again send it to the right, and now send it to the vertical center, it will sit right on top of the object from before. We can move that, let's send him to the bottom, and there he is. Now, if you want to align multiple objects to each other, shift select them. Hold down the shift key while you select them and use the alignment options. So let's align these in the cent up to the horizontal center. So now they're aligned to each other. They're lined up on their centers. Now we'll vertically center them. And now their vertical centers line up, so they're all on top of one another. That's not so fantastic, is it? So let's undo that. Leaving them selected, though, we can drag them as a group and place them, knowing that they're all perfectly lined up to each other. Lining up objects to each other carefully can really make a difference in how your slide looks, especially lining up the edges if you have multiple labels and that kind of thing. It's a very useful technique. Another useful tool found on the drawing toolbar is the arrangement tool. The arrangement options arrange the order in which objects are stacked on top of one another. And to manage that arrangement, you just select the object and choose the option. So let me select these three rectangles and I'm going to select them using the selection tool, just drag around them. Shift click also works, just a different way of doing it. And now I'm going to stack them up by choosing align center, horizontally and vertically. And now we see that the orange rectangle has disappeared because it isn't on top of the stack. So what we need to do is select the green rectangle, come to the arrangement icons. You see we can choose between bring to the front. That's not what we need because the green rectangle is already visible. Bring forward, again, not what we need. Send backward, that's what we want. Not send back because that would send it behind the big blue rectangle. Let me show you. And now we can see the orange rectangle but it doesn't work for us, so I'm going to undo 
and we'll choose send backward. That allows us to see the orange rectangle and the green rectangle and the blue rectangle. The arranged tools are useful again and again and again. So just a quick introduction and I'm sure you'll find many uses for them.